Hello guys, welcome to my SQL series on learning. My name is Nse. In the previous lesson, we saw how to create a database. In this lesson, we are going to see how to create tables. Let's get started. Remember that when a new database is created, it typically starts as an empty container without any data stored in it. To begin using a new database, you will usually need to define the structure of the database by creating tables. We are going to start with creating a simple table just like this. This table has three columns as we can see here on the screen. The first column is the customer ID. The second column is name and the third column is address. Please note that when a new table is created in a database, it does not contain any data initially. It is an empty structure with defined columns and data types, just like we have here. This table only has columns. It does not have any rows or records yet. It is until data is inserted into this table that we will start seeing rows or records. That being said, let's go to creating this table. But right before creating this table, let us talk about data types. What are data types? Simply put, data types define the kind of data that can be stored and manipulated. My SQL supports a variety of data types. So to see these data types, let's visit my SQL documentation on data types. I have provided this link in the description. Right here, you can see that there are lots of data types grouped into numeric data types, date and time data types, string data types, special data types, and all these other data types. Now let's click and open numeric data types. Notice here that under numeric data types, we have integer types and integer types contain int small int tiny int medium int big int we also have fixed point types under the fixed point types we have decimal we have numeric we have floating point types under the floating point types we have float we have double and all these other data types. Now from here, I'm going to click the back button, my browser back button to come back to where we have data types. Let's click and open string data types. Under string data types, you can see that we have the char and var char types. We have the binary and var binary types. We have the blob and text types. We have the enum type. We have the set type. So if you look below here, it says the string data types are the char, var char, binary, var binary, blob, text, enum, and set. I'm going to click on the back button to come back to the main data types page. You can already see that there are lots of data types that my SQL supports. However, in order not to overwhelm us, we are going to learn and use these data types in tiny bits. In today's lesson, we will only consider int and varchar because these are the two data types that we need to create this table. Ints would cover positive or negative whole numbers. Varchar 
would be used to represent variable length string with a maximum length specified. We are going to see how that works in a bit. I needed to talk about data types before creating tables because to create a table, you have to specify the type of data that will be inserted in each column. So to create a table, we use this command create table and we include a table name. If you look here, you're going to see that for this table, we have customer ID, we have name and we have address. Customer ID, we want to use int as the data type because it's going to be whole numbers. For the name field, we will use varchar because a name could contain many different characters of variable length. And we are going to set the maximum length to 100. So any name that has more than 100 characters cannot fit in. For address, we are going to use varchar as well. And we are going to set the maximum length to 150 characters. So any address that has more than 150 characters cannot fit into the column. Just to emphasize, our column names or headings, in this case, are customer ID, name, and address. Now let's head over to my SQL command line client. I'm going to enter my password. If any of this seems strange to you, you may want to refer to our previous lesson. The link is in the description. Right here on the command line, we are going to create a table. And we have to create this table within an existing database. So let's see the databases available right now. So to see the databases available, let's show databases. Of course, not forgetting my semicolon, then I'll hit the enter key of my keyboard. And we have displayed here to us the databases available. Let's use bookstore. So we simply have to type use bookstore like this with the semicolon and then we hit the enter key and the database in use now is the bookstore database to confirm that let's select database so you can see displayed here to us that the database that we have in use is the bookstore database now let's go ahead to creating our first table using the create table command of course so we're going to type create table i want to call this table employees end with a semicolon and hit the enter key of my keyboard notice here that we have this error saying that a table must have at least one visible column and this error comes from the fact that when I typed create table, I only ended after employees here. I did not specify columns to be included in the table. So now let's take that again. This is the syntax that we have to use. Create table, table name, and then we have parentheses here. And within the parentheses, we are going to specify our columns of course, with the data types. Let's head back to command line client. So here we can have create table employees and we open the parentheses. I want a new line, so I'm going to hit the enter key of my keyboard. You can decide to type your commands on one long line, but, but that's only going to be very difficult to read. So I prefer to start a new line at various points. Our first column is customer underscore ID and the data type is int. I have a comma here 
because after typing the name of the column and the data type to type the next column name you must have a comma so that's why i have this comma here i'm going to hit enter again because i need another new line and the next column is name for this i'm going to use varchar and i'm going to specify the maximum length let's just say 100 if there exists any name that's more than 100 characters in this world then such a name cannot get in this table comma and then i'll hit enter again and then we have address for address i am going to specify the data type as varchar again we already explained this and i'm going to set the maximum length to 100 also and now we can close the parentheses have our semicolon and then hit the enter key of the keyboard notice here now that it says query okay so that's good there are no errors displayed looks like we have a table created to confirm that we actually have been able to create this employees table we are going to type the command show tables here on command line client i'm going to type show tables semicolon and hit enter so we have here shown to us employees table up here it says tables in bookstore so remember that the database that we are using is the bookstore database that's why we have tables in bookstore this here is displaying all the tables currently available in the bookstore database if we create another table let's say create table authors we open the parenthesis i'll introduce a new line and for this let's just have first name that would be author's first name and let it be vacha this time i'll make it 30 characters i'll have a, a comma after it hit enter to introduce a new line and i'm going to have last name and i'm going to use vacha as the data type and i'll set it to 30 as well and i'll close the parenthesis i only need two columns in this table and we are fine of course not forgetting the semicolon and hit the enter key of your keyboard query okay meaning that we have been able to create this table authors so now let's show tables notice now that we have two tables shown to us the two tables that we have just created here in the bookstore database authors table and employees table that's how to create a table we are also able to see or inspect table columns for this we use the command describe table name like we have our employee table would simply type describe employee or we just leave it as desc i think i'd say desk we just leave it at desk employee and it's going to do the exact same thing let's go to command line client and do that so here on the command line client i'm going to type describe employees semicolon and then i'll hit enter so notice here that we have a more detailed table shown to us it has the field and type don't worry about null key default and extra we will talk about them in our upcoming lessons for now the only two columns here that are familiar to us are field and type field shows the various fields that are contained in our employees table remember that when we created the employees table we specified customer id 
it should be an int we specified name and set it to varcha we specified address and made it varcha as well that's exactly what is displayed to us here customer id int name varcha and we made the maximum length 100 address varcha to the maximum length is 100 so when you type the command describe table name it is going to show to you all the columns that you have on your table remember i also said we could use desk so to inspect authors let's use desk so we just have desc authors semicolon i have an error here because i typed author instead of authors so let's correct that desc authors now it is very important to type in your table names correctly otherwise you're going to run into errors okay we have a semicolon let's hit enter notice here that we have a description of author's table the two fields we provided were first name and last name and we have them here we set first name to varcha with maximum length of 30 characters we set last name to varcha to with maximum length of 30 characters so that's how to inspect the columns in your table let's head over to workbench and i'm going to enter my password we have the bookstore database here so here we need to select our database just by double clicking on it and we have tables listed under it if we click this arrow by tables we are going to see all the tables that we have inside the bookstore database so here you do not really need to type any command to see your tables though typing show tables would work as well we have here the tables in bookstore authors and employees but you could easily just click on the database and you would see the tables that you have under it that should save you the time of typing any commands we can also create tables in here let's create a table i'm going to call it menu this time and let's say uh, column breakfast and let's make it vacha let's set 100 character max limit comma don't forget let's type launch let's make it vacha and let's set it to 100 max limit 2 i'll hit enter to start another line and let's say dinner set it to vacha of 100 and i'm going to close the parenthesis and i'll end with a semicolon now to run this code i'm going to highlight it and click this icon that says execute the selected portion of the script and if you look here on the output window you are going to see that we have been able to create the table menu currently menu is not shown under the bookstore database but if we refresh the schemas just by clicking on this refresh button we are going to see that we have menu here shown to us all right so i hope that you get the point so that's how to create a table using my sql workbench we are also able to remove tables from the database and for that we are going to use the command drop table using this command drop table is going to remove the entire table structure from the database let's head over to the command line and let's type the command drop table i want to drop menu so i'll type menu there and i'll end with 
a semicolon of course i'll hit enter it says query okay so i suspect that made new has been dropped from the database but to be sure let's show tables notice here now that we don't have menu table in this database even though we had menu included remember i told us that workbench and command line would display the same thing so remember that we had this menu table created so on typing the drop tables command we have been able to remove menu from the database now let's drop authors drop authors semicolon i have an error looks like i didn't type the command correctly let's take it again drop table here i didn't include table that's why i had this error drop table and then table name authors semicolon i'll hit enter and this query is okay now let's show tables again hit enter notice that we only have one table left employees the author's table is gone now i do want us to notice that when dropping a table here in the command line there is often no prompt to confirm the action once you execute the command to drop the table it is immediately removed from the database without any further confirmation therefore it is important to exercise caution when using this command because dropping a table will remove that table alongside all its data and structure from the database it is recommended that you have a backup or confirmation before executing this command now i want us to drop employees before the end of today's lesson for that let's head over to workbench and let's refresh schemas here notice that the only table that we have left in our bookstore database or schemas as we have here on workbench is employees the exact same thing as we have on command line so now let's drop the employees table by typing drop table employees and ending with a semicolon so this time because it is only this line of command that i want to run I am going to click on this icon that says execute the statement under the keyboard cursor. So currently the cursor is by th this statement on line nine. So I'll click on this icon. And if you look here on the output window, you would see that we have been able to drop the employees table. It's successful. We do not have any error here. Now, if you look here on this left pane, you're going to see that our bookstore database currently does not have any table to display. That is because we have dropped all the tables that we created. But we can still just type show tables here. And let's execute the command and notice that it has been displayed to us here. Tables in bookstore, none is shown because we no longer have any table inside our bookstore database. I hope that you get the point. Now over here on command line, if we show tables, we will have empty sets. No table is shown to us because we have dropped all the tables. Just before we close, I want to remind us, I know I said it in the previous lesson, that my SQL is not case sensitive just like we had show tables in uppercase we can have show tables using lowercase letters all through and it's still going to work just fine my sql is not case sensitive however you would easily see that most of the keywords like varchar like create table like show tables are in uppercase that's totally up to you 
you can decide to use uppercase letters you can decide to use lowercase letters any one that you decide to use will work just fine i wanted to mention that as the last note before ending this lesson today if you have any questions if you have any comments do say them in the comment section do not forget to like and share the video also subscribe to learn in thank you for watching see you in the next lesson